And this is why people don't like Jon Stewart, because he's either woefully ignorant, I don't think that's the case, or he's an outright liar. In this story, such an a-hole, Jon Stewart gives cutting takedown of Kevin O'Leary defending Trump fraud. Why? You see, I look at these posts and I cannot assume Jon Stewart is so stupid as to how property value works that he's made a mistake. Jon Stewart, being very wealthy, likely owns many properties. Let me start by saying this. First, the gist of this segment, Jon Stewart misrepresents assessed value versus market value to defend the fraud narrative against Trump and attack an actual real estate developer who says it's not about Trump. It's about seizing property from someone. This is crazy. John Stewart here appears to be playing this. Um, ha ha, I'm just a silly man. But look, I can justify the actions of the fringe uh, leftist communist in New York City. Again, why many people don't like John Stewart. It's disingenuous. It's manipulative. And dare I say it is evil, either through sheer ignorance. But no, I don't think so. My friends, let me explain some things to you. I understand that many of you may not be millionaires. And so for someone like Jon Stewart, who uh, let's let's pull up Jon Stewart's net worth. He's an older guy. He's famous. According to the Internet, which we know is always correct, Jon Stewart's estimated net worth is one hundred and twenty million dollars. Wow. I really don't believe that, but that's pretty crazy. A bunch of these. Now, I will tell you that these uh, celebrity net worth websites, they're wrong because they don't get my net worth right. But um, this says his net worth is I got celebrity net worth pulled up 120 million. All right, let's just say we know for a fact that John Stewart's a millionaire. OK, I certainly don't have nearly as much money as John Stewart, though uh, we can make paper arguments about the value of this company. Let me tell you this. When you buy property, you typically, uh, depending on the property you're buying, you can buy it in your name. You can buy it in the name of a trust. You can buy it under an LLC, a limited liability corporation. It really just depends on what your lawyer advises you, I suppose. Many people do different things. When you do buy these properties, you may notice your tax liability, which means uh, the tax liability uh, value of a building. I mean, you know what? Let's just do this. Let me debunk John Stewart in real time by going to Zillow.com. The first thing I want to do, though, is read for you what John Stewart said before we uh, we break this down. He says Kevin O'Leary, uh, they say Kevin O'Leary is not just the co-host of the competitive reality show Shark Tank or a fierce defender of Trump. He's also an a-hole, John Stewart says. Stewart opened Monday night's The Daily Show with a series of takedown, with a searing takedown of the conservative media's victimless crime defense of the business valuation fraud for which Trump has been found liable. Quote, the attorney general of New York knew that Trump's property values were inflated because when it came time to pay taxes, Trump undervalued the very same properties. Stewart mocked Trump. It was all part of a very specific real estate practice known as lying. Ha ha ha. After playing clips of various talking heads in the conservative media realm, including O'Leary, defending Trump's fraudulent overvaluation of his properties, Stewart feigned surprise that O'Leary would take the position of who's next to be prosecuted. Stewart parodied Martin Neil Mo uh, Moller's I don't know, famous quote, ah, who's next? The persecuted minority of the investment community, Stewart mocked. First, they came for the arbitragers, and I said nothing for I was in an arbitrager. And then they came for the quants, which I could be. I don't know what a quant is, but I'm surprised to hear this from Kevin O'Leary, a guy who's such an a-hole. Wait, that even other people on Shark Tank think he's an a-hole, which he followed the montage of O'Leary barely hiding disgust at contestants of his show. You see what he's doing with poisoning the well. O'Leary makes a legitimate argument. Trump didn't do anything out of the ordinary. John Stewart then goes in for the character assassination to poison your view of Kevin O'Leary. I don't know or care if Kevin O'Leary is an a-hole. He's pointing out facts in real estate, which I can easily prove to you in a second. Whenever I do these big debunks, please consider sharing this video with your friends who watch The Daily Show. And uh, they can comment below. Please encourage them. Say, you need to comment on the video and tell Tim Pool why he's wrong and why John Stewart's correct. I welcome you to do it. Stewart uh, aired a quote, blah, 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 quote, leave it to Kevin O'Leary to be unaware enough to say the quiet part out loud. He said before going for the kill, the effing entitled to arrogance. I don't know if you know this, but most people just can't commit fraud and expect to face no repercussions, even if everyone's doing it. Try getting a car loan by saying you have 10 times as much money as you really do, or claim 20 dependents when you have no children, or say you make slightly less money to qualify for food assistance. I will guarantee you there are not just financial consequences for those lies, but criminal ones. Yo, from Rocket.com, 
Assessed value versus market value questions answered. From February 29th, 2024. This is not fraud. It's quite literally how governments handle this. And if the government tells you this is how you do it, you say, okay, and they go, ha ha, fraud. Now we've got a problem of government, John. You intentionally duplicitous and disingenuous bad actor. Assessed value and market value. Assessed value is assigned by a local government for property tax purposes. A market value is the price a buyer and seller would agree upon in an open competitive market. Determine, uh, assessed value is determined by a tax assessor and market value by an appraiser. The determination of an assessed value is based on factors like location, size, condition, and other relevant criteria assessed by the government. Market value is determined by factors such as recent sales of comparable properties, property condition, and home size. Assessed value is used to determine the amount of property taxes owed. Market value is fluctuate, fluctuates based on local market the economy, and other property features and upgrades. The reason why they're different, it's actually quite simple. The assessed value is static. You pay your bill, and we need to know what that bill's going to be moving forward to make sure we can maintain this property. But market value could change in a moment's notice. A rich guy comes in and says, I want to buy this whole block. And you're like, whoa, the whole block. And instantly, prices are going to go up because everyone knows he wants that block. Maybe a real estate guy says, I'm going to demolish all of these houses and build the circus. Whatever he wants to do, you now have a potential, a potential for holding out. He goes to your house and says, what's the market value? Well, the assessed value could be 100000 but now with your market demand, it's upwards of 300 So here's what happens. The tax assessor comes to your building and says, it's a $100,000 property. You do some improvements. You improve the lawn. You get reassessed. They say, yeah, it's gone up. Now you owe us a little bit more money. I also think it's insane. You got to pay more taxes because you made your house nicer. That's a whole other story. Then a real estate guy comes in and goes, actually, now, because of the change as of yesterday, you got assessed a month ago, but yesterday the market price changed and your value has gone up. So you go to a bank and say the current market value is X. It was assessed a few months ago at a different rate, but that's how things go. I give you my friends Zillow.com. I simply went to Zillow and clicked the first property that appeared. 800. Ooh, look at this beautiful house. We got a Seattle, Washington property. $835,000. Ooh, we. What photos we got? Look at this. Oh, we got it. We got it playing these beautiful. Oh, look at that. Wow. That looks very nice. I appreciate the high dynamic range photographs they've taken of this very beautiful Seattle location. Now, only a crazy person would choose to live in Seattle right now, but perhaps you are crazy. Certainly, I would invest a million dollars in real estate in Seattle. That's just me. But maybe you want to live surrounded by leftists. Now, you may be saying, now, hold on there a minute. We've got a uh, $835,000 sale. Let me scroll down to Zillow and see what we can find. We've got a 3D tour. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. Facts and features. Got a three bedroom, three bathroom. Oh, that is so great. Second floor. No basement. What can I say? Total spaces, uh, construction style. Now, I'm hoping they have the assessment here. Price history. Uh, unfortunately, there is no tax history. OK, OK. So, uh, OK, hold on. Property taxes based on the current selling price. All right. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's see if we can find something older in the Seattle area, which is going to give us the actual tax assessment, because this is the point why I bring this up. Uh, not every single uh, zest. Ooh, the Zestimate here says it's worth less. Take a look at this. This one's listed at six hundred and forty nine thousand. This beautiful property. And the Zestimate from Zillow based on comparables is six hundred and thirty one thousand. Fraud. Fraud, I say. How dare you try to get more money out of me when Zillow? Well, OK, Zillow is not the. Uh, uh, let's see if we can get a, a tax assessment here. Can you get out of here with this uh, neighborhood market value facts and features? Yada, yada. We need some uh, we need some tax history, guys. Maybe I should jump to a different state, which is going to give us better tax history on these. I don't know. Maybe Seattle is, uh, is not the OK price. Oh, we got it. We got it, baby. Here we go. Let's play this game. John Stewart. There is no way I believe you're this stupid. OK. Uh, uh, let's let's jump down. The year is 2023. Property taxes on this beautiful property listed on Zillow is 4,639 with a tax assessed value of 485,000. Yet in 2023, it was listed for sale at 660,000. We got them, boys. We got fraud in Washington state. The tax assessed. You mean the people who own this building? They knew the government said it was only worth 485000 and they're trying to sell it for 660 Fraud. The poor people who, 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 who wanted to buy this 
who are being defrauded. And I tell you this now, good sirs and ma'ams, madams, how could you possibly consider buying this property currently listed at six hundred and forty nine thousand dollars price change as of March when you know the assessed value is only four hundred and eighty five thousand? Looks like you got some explaining to do here, sir. We got him. John, I need your help. It turns out that there are hundreds of thousands of properties currently being listed at fraudulent prices. How dare they raise the price on this? Could you imagine? Take a look at this. You're trying to sell this house for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Let's let's talk about the fraud here. We're going to get them. So you buy this property and you're shifty and you're looking around and you're like, I know the tax assessed value is only four hundred and eighty five thousand dollars, which certainly means the property could be worth no more than that. But so you got to you got a plan. You list this for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. You see where we're going with this. Now, the unsuspecting buffoon goes to the bank and says, they say the property is valued at 660 and the bank goes, well, gee, I guess we just have to trust them and I'll issue out that loan. Bang. You, the homeowner, you just get all that money. That's right. Even though the government says the property is only worth 485,000, you just scored yourself a quick 180 K, oh, 175 you put in your pocket by lying about the value of this property. John. John, please, I need your help. How about we do this? We start a nonprofit to put in prison anyone who has listed their property above the tax assessed value by the government. John, I know you, as someone who's worth millions of dollars, owns property. How much do you want to bet I can look up your properties where you value on your taxes property at higher or lower amounts than the government tax assessed value so that you can pay more or less. How many properties has John Stewart sold recently? I'd love to play that game. I wonder if it's possible to look up John Stewart's publicly available public facing properties. Now, he may put them behind trusts and LLCs, and so it could take some work to try and figure out what properties he owns, bought or sold. But I'm willing to bet John Stewart has sold properties at higher values than the government has assessed defrauding these poor people. Could you imagine John Stewart selling a property? Let me see if I can Google search this. Let's let's roll. John Stewart sells home. Let's see if any of these stories come up. Uh Oh, 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 my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we got him. John. John Stewart admitted to committing fraud. This one's going to be wild. I'm kidding, by the way. I don't know that he actually committed it, uh, admitted to committing fraud. I don't actually think selling property at a, um, a higher value than the government determines its worth is fraud. But this is the argument. John Stewart's calling it fraud because Donald Trump paid taxes, then went to the bank and said, it's probably going to sell for more than that. And the bank said, well, we'll get our own appraisal. The bank came back and said, we don't think it's worth that, worth that much, so we'll give you a loan at X. And Trump said, OK. And they went, fraud! Fraud, I say. Oh, boy. New York Times, November 7th, 2014. What's the statute of limitations on uh, real estate fraud? John Stewart sells Tribeca penthouse for $17.5 million. Whoa. A sophisticated penthouse at 161 Hudson Street. Uh Uh-oh. All right, baby. Let's roll. I'm going to type that address right there at Zillow. 161 Hudson, New York. Looks like we do have uh, Zestimates for this penthouse. It is off the market. Let's play. I'm willing to accept that I am wrong. And maybe John Stewart did the noble and honorable thing of asking the government what the value of his property was and then selling it at the rate the government determined it was worth. A sophisticated penthouse at 161 Hudson Street configured as a duplex loft with 2,000 square feet of outdoor options and nearly 6,000 square feet of interior space sold for $17.5 million and was the most expensive sale of the week, according to city records. The vol- voluminous, voluminous unit number 9A8B, with more than 40 windows providing exposures in three directions, has been owned since 2005 by the television pundit John Stewart, host of The Daily Show. 
This time, the apartment traded privately with Mr. Stewart reaping a serious profit. Records indicate that he paid $5.8 million in 2005, a year after the circa 1900 building underwent a conversion to loft style residence. The building at the corner of Hudson and Late Streets enjoyed previous notoriety inside of wetlands, etc., etc., etc. The runner up selling at $13,695,462.50 was a five bedroom, seven and a half bath sponsored. Okay, blah, 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 blah. All right, what do we got? Five bedroom, six bath. What was, uh, uh, do they say his was bigger than this? Let's just compare the square footage so we can see that we're getting something comparable. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Home details. Do they, they might not have it. This property is not currently for sale. Uh, let's see. Uh, or for rent on Zillow. How many square feet do we have here? $6,000 HO. Total interior livable size is 5,802. Okay. I don't know that they actually have the tax assess, uh, assessments on this loft. Um, we have the price history. 2022. And we do not have, uh, we don't have any tax uh, data on this one. So unfortunately I can't give you the, uh, the taxes here, but I'd be willing, or is it because they're not doing it on the property? Cause well, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, let me, let me make sure I get this right. I, you know, all joking aside, do you, uh, property taxes apply to all type of real estate, including condos. So I'm, I'm curious as to what the, uh, tax assessed value is be. Um, and how do you pull that one up? Long story short, I pulled this up because the reality is there's no way John Stewart sold this at the tax assessed value, especially if they're arguing other properties went, uh, you know, for different rates. And uh, we're here in New York City. Let's just do this. Let's find a comparable building. I see. I just saw 17 million. Let's see if we can get a. Uh, so this is slightly smaller with 4000 square feet, but at 17 million, let's see if we can get the tax assessment for whatever this property is. You can't get them all the time. So maybe we won't be, we're not going to be able to hear uh, market value, price history, public tax history unavailable. Let's uh, let's keep digging. Property tax is at $14,000. You can make the, uh, oh, okay, it's an estimated property tax. Let's try and find a uh, comparable, uh, we're, we're going to have fun with this one. We're going to, we're going to take our time here. Let's do a minimum of, what's the minute most, let's do a minimum of uh, $15 million. And there we go. All right, we got a $15 million property right here. Let's see if we can find some tax data on any one of these buildings. I'm doing this in real time, by the way. So uh, this is all. And uh, let's see, do they have uh, tax information on this bad boy? Price history. And there we go. Holy crap. Whoa. Take a look at this. It's actually rather shocking to me. This property is listed at $15 million. And its tax assessed value in New York City was $654,000. I think we need an investigation here. I think we need an investigation into John Stewart. Because I'd be willing to bet based on comparables as of right now. And, then, and you go back. This is 2014. Let's see. Here's a property. $17 million. How many? How much? What's the square footage? 5,900. Comparable. Comparable to the property that John Stewart sold. Let's see if they've got tax assessed value here. And they do. $720,000 tax assessment. What is this? Something's not right. So, something is not right. Uh, look at this. Property tax is 88000 Let me put it this way. The tax assessment, certainly they must not be... Art. Look, I don't know. You know, I'm just going to say this. I'm wrong about something because something's way off. We've got some questions for John Stewart. On the first property I showed you in Seattle, the tax assessed value was about half a million and it was being sold for 660 That makes sense. Tax assessment says it's worth this. It's actually worth quite a bit more. Interesting. Is tax assessment... What does that mean? Let's, let's make sure we get this right. Because I'm actually surprised. Your property tax assessment. Blah, 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 blah. The assessed value of your property. That's that's ridiculous. I, I didn't know that. For real? New York City assesses a $15 million condo at $700,000? All right, John. I mean, did you defraud the city of New York to the tune of millions of dollars? That is a wild, wild story. But maybe this is why Kevin O'Leary is freaking out so much about what's going on in New York, because all of these properties sell for way more than their tax assessed value, basically destroying the New York market. I didn't, real <laughs> I didn't realize it was this serious. The tax assessment on this $20 million loft is 900000 Wow. Now, that's fascinating. Uh-oh. 
Oh, Jenny boy, I got questions about how much you were paying in taxes at that property. Maybe we should start to do some uh, digging to see about the fraud that you've committed. Maybe, maybe not. I think it's entirely possible I'm missing something with New York law or whatever, but it is a fact. Tax assessed value and property value, market values are totally different things. John Stewart made the argument that Trump committed fraud and Kevin Leary is an a-hole, Kevin O'Leary is an a-hole, because they're, because they, don't, they, they draw a distinction between tax assessment and market value. Remarkable, isn't it? But that's why people say John Stewart's not a good dude. Not a good dude. Say I love you. I don't know. I suppose y'all can look into it. I just Google search John Stewart sells home and this story popped right up. I'm sure you can easily look in the county website to see the tax assessed value of that property and see how much John Stewart defrauded New York City and New York State for. John, I think it's time we start seizing your assets. If that's the game you want to play, I certainly hope Donald Trump does. How about Donald Trump gets in office and says, you, all right, I'll, I'll allow the state to seize my properties, and I am going to start by going after everybody with federal charges who did the same thing. Welcome to real estate hell. Now, I don't think you should actually do it, but there you go. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast IRL. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.